Hey guys, what's going on today? So here's the deal. I'm all hyped up on Mountain Dew today. I got the day off, so I'm going to be putting out a couple videos, catch up. It's been a while since I put up my last video. And uh, so yeah, today's topic, well one of many, but the one that got me started here on these videos today is war game rules. Now, I have a lot of different rule sets, and there's many more I would like to have. The majority of them I have played. Some of them I have not, uh, just like others. There are rules hoarders out there, buy up every rule book they possibly can, all the supplements along with it, and never play a game of any of it. So, um, I wanted to take the time to show you the rules I have and hopefully inspire a couple of you to make your own videos and show me the rules that you have, uh, maybe some of the same rules, what you like about them, if you played them, and whether or not you are, you know, a longtime player or pursuing them, if they are your main go-to rules, all that good stuff. So hopefully a few of you also have rules that I've never seen or heard of before, and that way I can add to my to-buy list and uh, I'll also talk to you guys about some rule sets that I want to get. But anyway, I'll go ahead, instead of wasting any more time here, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, the first is one that many of you have heard of, which is Black Powder. Uh, this is the first edition. It's the second printing of the first edition. Uh, so I think there was some erotic corrections in there. But uh, anyway... So I will one day get the second edition, I think. From what I heard of, there's not too many differences in there. And I know these rules fairly well. I've played them many times. Uh, they're not my, you know, they're not my favorite in most in-depth Napoleonic rule set. And that's what I use them for is Napoleonics. Um, but, you know, they are quick playing. They're smooth. They're pretty easy to understand and they don't get bogged down. So that's one of the main reasons that uh, I keep coming back to them on somewhat of a regular basis is it's a Napoleonic game that I can enjoy with my son uh, from the time he was 12, I think, is when we started playing this game. And he's now 17 years old. Uh, it's kind of hard to get him to the table anymore. He's, uh, you know, he's a busy teenager, but um, he still, uh, this is one of the few games that we can play that he doesn't complain about because uh, let me tell you if you guys have you know higher age teenagers they will complain about anything especially if you're looking up rules every couple minutes so uh, that's one reason why this game has stayed on my playlist for so long uh, that being said another by warlord games is hail caesar and this is pretty much the same deal everything i uh, said for black powder pretty much applies to hail caesar uh, i use this to game the classical era uh, meaning basically you know not not biblical not as far back as that but basically uh the greeks all the way to the imperial romans although i have no imperial romans so basically the republican roman era macedonian uh successors stuff like that that's pretty much my classical age range. I do have some biblical figures, but I they're not big enough to play these games. I, they're DBA-sized armies. They're 12-element size, so uh, any biblical gaming that I do is in the DBA standard. Uh, but yeah, Hail Caesar, basically, like I said, the same applies to the previous, which is uh, doesn't get bogged down. It's quick playing, easy to understand. My son is familiar with it. We play this in... Uh, six millimeter and 15 millimeter so you know it has it's uh, very easily adaptable for any different scale that you may play the majority of people I know play in 28 millimeter I don't play 28 millimeter any longer I won't get into that this video uh, I won't get into too many supplements but I'll just show you this one here like I said this is the hail Caesar army list biblical and classical um, which is the ranges that I play Hail Caesar in. Um, back to Black Powder, these got out of order somehow, but I play AWI uh, in Black Powder, so this is a Rebellion supplement, and I play that in 15 millimeter. And I play ACW, uh, Glory Hallelujah, this is the supplement for Black Powder, ACW, and I also play that in 15 millimeter. And then the Napoleonics for Black Powder. I play Clash of Eagles, 
uh, which is the Russian front, and then of course Albion Triumphant, which was I believe the first supplement that came out uh, for Black Powder when it originally released a long time ago. So that's pretty much my Warlords uh, Ancients and Black Powders. Also, I have Bolt Action. Uh, second edition and I have many many supplement books I didn't break them out because it, this it, that would extend the the video far too long for my intentions but bolt action second edition um, I haven't played too much of it I've probably 15 to 20 games under my belt I use 15 millimeters so I, I scale the game differently but it seems to work out very good and I'm currently in kind of a massive Stalingrad 15 millimeter project and as soon as I get that done, I'll probably be playing this a lot more. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, then we go to another World War II supplement, or game, and that is Rommel. I know several of you have done reviews on this game and everything else. I've played one game of this using uh, basically handmade cards just to see how the game played. I've watched a couple, you know, how-tos or quick plays online on YouTube here. And I must say I'm very intrigued with this game. Uh, I like the, the all the unique things about it. It's a, it's a one-of-a-kind war game. And I'm doing this for uh, three millimeter. I'm doing three millimeter armies on they're smaller than 40 by 40 they're in uh, u.s standard one of the only u.s standard bases i use i think they're one and a half inches by one and a half inches square bases i can't remember but anyways three millimeters um is the scale i'm doing this in and uh, it's a whole new adventure for me painting at that scale but um i like the way they're coming out maybe i'll do a video i don't have much painted up but maybe i'll do a video to show you uh what those are coming out like but, uh, yeah, I'm very intrigued in this game, and I look forward to r playing Rommel by Sam Mustafa uh, very much. It's one of my top two-play games that I have in my stack. And these are in no particular order, so this is going to kind of swing from genre to genre and era to era here. But um, Songs of Drums and Shackles. Now, this is my go-to Napoleonic skirmish game, and there's not a lot of Napoleonic skirmish games out there, but uh, you know there is uh, What's that one by two fat lardies? I have it shark practice. There you go. I have shark practice two, and That is you know technically a skirmish game, but this is this is a true skirmish game right here The figures are based one-to-one -one. Uh, each soldier moves around individually, fires individually. It has that three dice activation system that the Ganesha games use. If you have played Song of Sword, Blades and Swords, or Swords and Blades, uh, Swords and Heroes, there you go, which I don't own. I have it on PDF, but uh, I haven't played it yet. I Fantasy stuff like that, we play Dungeons and Dragons. I have a group that meets weekly, so you know I don't really got to find another game for that. But this game I really do love, and when my son was about eight years old, this is the type of rule sets we started off with, all the Ganesha games, and I have more in here that we'll look over. But JJ, my son, has absolutely loved these games, and one of the Ganesh games that I'll show you here in a minute is one of his favorite. But I also have a supplement, which is called More Songs of Drums and Shackles, which adds more uh, nationalities to it, more troop types, etc. Uh, not so much rules, unless they're uh, nationally specific rules. But this is a great game, um, cheap, and a lot of fun to play if you have some spare Napoleonic miniatures that you can base up on single bases. I would highly recommend this game. Uh, if you don't know about the three dice activation system, it's uh, I won't get into it now, but it's, let me just put it this way. It's a simple system, a lot of fun, and uh, it can be played really quickly with high entertainment value. Uh, that being said, one of the first rule sets I bought when I got a, when I got back into miniature gaming was Song of Shadows and Dust. And this is another one by Ganesh Games, it uses that three dice activation system. But this is a miniature skirmish rules for urban violence and civil disruption in the ancient world. And there's very little online about this game. I was intrigued by somebody's blog who had this and had a whole Roman city built up for it. And um, I was just fascinated by it. And I, I bought this, 
and I bought some 15 millimeter blue moons and some other stuff, a lot of civilians. I ate up any ancient civilian I could, based them up, and built, you know, block houses, little cheap Roman city, and JJ, my son, he just loved it. He was like eight or nine years old when we started playing this, something like that, and he couldn't get enough of it. Every time, every time, you know, we had any free time, he was asking to play this game, and and uh, we have some very good memories playing this game. I would highly recommend it. And I haven't played it in a while, but I am building up. As you, you know, I've done another video on my Gangs of Rome project, and um, mainly I'm, we're going to be playing songs of uh, Shadows and Dust, not Games of Rome, to tell you Gangs of Rome, to tell you the truth. Um, moving along here, I have Ronin, which is by Osprey Games, and this is a samurai skirmish uh, war game. Uh, there's been battle reports and reviews of this done. I painted up a lot of 15 millimeter uh, miniatures, uh, Japanese, you know, feudal Japanese miniatures, and um, played it a couple times, and uh, that was about it. Um, it doesn't hold. I, I used to be fascinated by, um, you know, this era in time and this location when I was younger. Uh, read James Clavell Shogun, which really kicked off my love for that period. Um, it just doesn't interest me so much anymore. So this game, unfortunately, doesn't make it to the table as often, as near often as it probably should. And my miniatures don't see much light either, to tell you the truth. So I don't know, maybe I'll sell those off or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, moving along here, this is a game which I have seen really nothing on. And it's called Sea Eagles. And you can get it from the Thoroughbred War... Uh, Thoroughbred miniatures website and it's small ship actions in the age of sail and i actually have a couple uh 15 millimeter scale brigs and sloops they're very large they're about uh at least a foot long for the smaller vessels bigger for the larger vessels but um it's a you know it's it's a it's a naval action game with big ships that take up a lot of space and uh, it's, you know, there's boarding with miniatures, individually based miniatures. So it's like a skirmish game on ships. And it is a great game, actually. I've played it a couple times, not with my own, not with actual uh, modeled ships because I haven't finished mine yet. They are a lot of work. I bought them a couple years ago and I have so much other stuff to do. I will get back in and, and finish those ships up, but I plan to do full rigging on them uh, and just make them look beautiful. So, but uh you know, you can also adapt this to smaller scales. Um, if you have, you know, one to 700 scale ships or whatever, uh, it can be done. And there are ways to do it. I've thought about doing it, uh, and maybe I will eventually. But this game is a lot of fun from what I have play tested it with. Like I said, I've played it two or three times uh, with miniatures on basically paper cutout of a ship, pretty much is how I've tested it. Um, but it's a lot of fun, not well known, um, and it's one of the my hidden gems of my Rule Games collection. Um, you know, I'd like to see other people take a look into this and see what kind of projects they can come up with it for. But once again, it's Sea Eagles from Thoroughbred Miniatures, and uh, I do recommend that if you're into the Age of Sail. It's uh, very interesting. And uh, while I'm at it, I wanted to also say in the intro is uh, if you want, if you if you see some of these rules that I'm showing and nobody else has ever opened them up or done a video or introduction or a review or taken a look at them here online, let me know and I'll put up a video uh, and uh, I'll tell you guys more, uh, more in depth. You know, we'll take a more in depth look at whatever of these rules you guys want to look at if nobody else has them on there. So. It's not a problem at all. Here's another Ganesha Games book, and it's 6165, and it's company-level American Civil War rules. So it's it's kind of, uh, and these these were, I, I believe these games were released before the Sharp Practice series, but, you know, there's some comparison to be had there between this game and Sharp Practice. Um, there's similarities there, but it's also, it's a different activation system, etc. I would like to see a game like this, by Ganesha Games made for Napoleonic. Because so I'll tell you what, as little love as Ganesha Games seems to get, it has its own, you know, kind of hardcore following. 
uh, small following, but outside of that, they don't get much love. And I got to say, this system, which the majority of Ganesha games revolves around the three dice activation system, it's one of my favorite gaming systems. Um, you know, it's not going to give you that depth that you need for a large scale battle, that CNC control, stuff like that. But for small company level or skirmish games, uh, it's perfect. It really is. Um, this game, like I said, some people have bought into it thinking of something else when it says right there on front, it's company level. So it's not huge battles. But there are there is historical precedence for this type of level of game, which goes back to you know certain scenarios which are included in here. And I also have other Civil War historical books and references that uh, you know you could easily develop small skirmishing scenarios, company level scenarios out of that. Um, speaking of that, Shark practice. I don't think much needs to be said about this. I know a lot of people have done it online here. There's been reviews, etc. Um, I think it would be cool to look into their online resources that they have, their PDF downloads for the expansions for this. So I have a couple that uh, focus on like the Royal Marines um, in, the, in, you know, conflicts in the West Indies and uh, anything involving the Royal Marines, French Marines, you know, sailors, etc., which is originally what I bought into this game for, to do my 15mm uh, uh, Royal Navy force, which I've done a video on. If you go back and look, I've done it. It has some sailors and, and some Marines, some captains, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, moving on with two Fat Lardies games, I have several on here. Uh, Ducks Britanniarum, uh, which is sort of the sharp practice of the ancient world. Uh, the Dark Ages, actually, actually, excuse me. And I've done battle reports for this and several other introductions for it and uh, reviews, stuff like that. So you go back on my videos list, you'll find them easily. And uh, the Raiders is an expansion for that. It includes the, Spick, the, the Picks, the Scotty, and the Irish in the Age of Arthur. Uh, you know, I like these games and I've played them. Um, my son digs them somewhat. Uh, I, I just don't like the card usage in these games, to tell you the truth. I'm planning on f uh, starting a new campaign, probably, and following it all the way to the end this time. When I do, it'll probably be about a year before I do it. But, uh, yeah, you know, the card-driven system, and it just... Um, I don't like it for some reason. I don't know. So, you know, I've played probably a total of 15 games on that, finished two campaigns, and halfway completed one. What a Tanker is another Two Fat Lardies game. Uh, I have not played this as of yet. I'm excited to get it to the table. I have a wide variety of World War II armor uh, painted up for not only bolt-action tank battles, but uh, also What a Tanker. So... Uh, from the battle reports I've seen and the reading I've done in the rules, it looks like a very fun game. I'm intrigued by that, so we'll have to take a look at that here soon. And I think that pretty much concludes my uh, What a Tanker rules. So this one's kind of off my normal beaten path of games here, but uh, the Warhammer Kill Team Core Manual. Well, my originally when I started gaming when I was uh, 10 years old, you know, that's going on. Uh, almost 30 years ago, just short of 30 years ago now. Uh, my one love back then when I was young, just like most other young kids, was the Games Workshop stuff. Warhammer Fantasy, Kill Team, etc. You know, they killed off Fantasy. I have no interest in Edge of Sigmar. But, and I had really had no interest in Warhammer 40k either with the amount of changes it's done and gone through. But Kill Team kind of drew my interest because... Uh, it would allow me to take all those Warhammer 40k miniatures that I've had painted that a lot of them are, you know, torn apart now and in pieces, but the ones that aren't, um, I can put together small teams and use this. Now, I haven't played it as of yet. I uh, played a lot of 40k back in the day, like I said, but I haven't played this specifically. Watch some battle uh, reports online and stuff like that, so eventually I will get around to gaming this, and I think my son would probably show some interest in that too, because he used to love Warhammer when he was a young kid, just like almost every young kid does. Uh, Blucher, Bletcher, whatever you guys want to say, I say Blucher. So, uh, I'm fascinated by this game. I've played it with the cards. I have uh, the card sets for the Russians, the uh, Ottomans, the French... The British, the Spanish, 
you know, I got, I got a lot of the card sets. And so I've played a lot of games with Blue Shirt using those cards. Uh, and I love it. I love the game. I really do. Uh, I'm currently in a massive six millimeter project, uh, painting up forces, actual forces to use in this game that are specifically dedicated to Blue Shirt. So um, look forward to putting up those battle reports when I do. Uh, another game by Sam Mustafa. And like I said, Sam Mustafa just has a very unique type of creativity when it comes to creating war games. So, you know, I'm excited to uh, actually play this with miniatures and terrain, good good looking terrain. And I'm also doing them in huge six millimeter project all around. have several. Um, one that many of you played has been Debellus Ante Quitatis, DBA for short. This is version 3.0. I've played it since 2.0, I believe. And uh, nothing really needs to be said about this. If you're watching this video, you've probably heard or know about this, own it, or have played it many, many times. It's one of my favorite rule systems. However, I'm currently moving over to DBMM, uh, which I don't own in print, but I own the PDF of it. And I plan on doing a wide variety of large classical armies for DBMM. And uh, I'm looking forward to it greatly. It's a Zeiston project. Everything in the, for DBMM that I'm doing right now and painting up is going to be a Zeiston miniature. And uh, I'm in love with those miniatures now. It's my new love. It's AB and Zeiston for me all the way at this point. And Bacchus for my 6mm. Um, but uh, yeah, this is good stuff right here. Very simple, easy war game. I've played it a lot. I still play it occasionally. Um, but uh, DBMM is starting to draw me back into this whole DBX system. And uh, really excited to do that. And I'll talk about some more of the DBX system here in a moment when we get to it. One that I've only played once using proxy miniatures is Sword and Spear by Great Escape Games um, by Mark Lewis. And I this is the second edition. And I know the first edition had some complaints from the reviewers on it about skirmishers, interpenetration. But to me, the second edition seems like it's fixed those complaints. I don't know because I don't have the first or never had the first to compare it to. But from the game that I played with this, I am very intrigued with it. I think... You know, I'm going to test it out some more now that I have some fully functional 6mm armies, um, which I think suits this game maybe better, at least in the scale I'm interested in playing it in. So I think uh, I'm going to give this game a go. Uh, like I said, I'm intrigued by it. It has a unique activation system and command and control system. Uh, the army lists are, this is the entire book right here. The uh, rule book, that's the only thing you got to buy. All the army lists you can download from their uh, website, polkovonik.com, uh, I think it is. I don't know. If you just do a Google search for sword and spear army lists, it'll take you right to that website. And you can download them all from there for free. It has a ton of army lists. Not quite as much as, you know, the DBA army list because it doesn't cover such a wide scope. But there is a very large selection uh, if you're into Ancients Wargaming, uh, you know, all the way through up to Firearms, I think pretty much you can find uh, in, in this uh, Sword and Spear rulebook. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I was looking through the rules the other day and the definitions, and this does cover some of the early uh, Firearms, like Flintlock, stuff like that. So um, this very well may be, uh, you know, comparable to the scope that DBA covers, biblical all the way up to the early introduction of firearms. But um, yeah, this is uh, very intriguing to me. I'm excited to take a further dive into that as well. Now, we will look at, what do I got here? Here is some army lists that I've downloaded. And you can see here, there's probably, shoot, there's probably 50 pages of army lists right here for sword and spear that I've downloaded and printed out. And that's not even all of them. Um, that's nowhere near all of them. So I have about 50 lists right there, and it's nowhere near uh, that. But here is a DBA HX 3.0. Now, this is a conversion, a supplemental conversion to use for DBA 3.0. And this allows you to game the Napoleonic Wars. And I know there is DBN and a couple others that may be useful for that. But I like this version. And this was by... Um, 
to Mary Link is his online alias, but his name is uh, Robert Madrigal, and I hope I don't uh, slaughter that last name. If I do, I apologize, Robert. But I've had a little bit of correspondence with him online and websites, and um, I, I like this rule set that he has here. It's uh, it contains its own army lists, which are which are the majority of this. This is only like maybe four pages, five pages of rules uh, that you know rule differences and add-ons to DBA 3.0, which you do need to play this. So there's only a couple pages of rules to help you uh, make that uh, transition over into this time frame era. But the majority of this is army lists, and this covers a wide range, pretty much from. Uh, let's see, let's see what the first army list is. So it goes all the way up to, but not including the U.S. Civil War. And it starts with the first army list, which is the War of the Spanish Succession. So it goes from the War of Spanish Succession all the way up to, but not including ACW. I think there are other supplements that play in ACW, and there has been some online discussion in using this for ACW as well, with a couple other slight modifications. But uh, I haven't played that yet. I'm going to. I look forward to it. I'm a huge DBX fan, so that's definitely on my list of things to do. Taking a look at some other PDFs that I've printed out uh, right here on the left-hand side of this folder is More Drums and Shackos which is the expansion to the Ganesha games that we've already talked about, Song of Drums and Shackles. So, um, yeah, that's a lot of fun there. I have kind of a medieval skirmish tournament game. Um, it has, uh, it's called Tournament, Pageantry, and Pain. And this is, it has, you know, it's a way to use your individually based medieval figures for tournaments. And there's jousting, there's duels, um, you know, Royal Rumble types. I forget the event names. Uh, archery contests, you know, and there's all sorts of rules for rewards, upgrading your equipment, going from tournament to tournament, town to town, etc. Um, it's sort of like a Dunkin' Egg adventure if you've read the Dunkin' Egg uh, novel. Um, you know, it's the Game of Thrones offshoot. Uh, I read a tremendous amount. So anyway, yeah, it gives me it, gives, it has that sort of flavor of going from tournament to tournament. Uh, another game in here is the rules with no name, and this was is or was I don't I don't know. It looks like it used to have a huge following, which is the rules with no name, uh, or otherwise known as a fistful of dice, and it's a Western uh, skirmish game, individually based Western shootout. Um, you know, cowboys versus uh, robbers, cowboys versus Indian sheriffs versus whoever. Uh, you know, you have the Mexicans involved in there, the Indians, Cowboys. Like I said, I'm, I'm repeating myself now. Anyway, you get the point. It's a Western skirmish game. has a huge following. I've bought some miniatures for it. Haven't played it. I've read a lot of battle reports for it and blogs that were written a long time ago. And it looks like a tremendous amount of fun. And, you know, I live right here in Arizona. I've been down to Tucson and Tombstone several times. Uh, so, you know, this is right in my historical backyard um, you know, you British and, and French and Europeans, you guys have all this stuff right in your backyard. This is like the only historical thing I have in my backyard, Indians and the Cowboys <laughs> out here in Arizona. So, uh, I won't lie, you know, there, there is some other stuff in there, but that's the majority of it. Um, and then we have, uh, Red Sand and Blue Sky, Heroes of the Arena. And this is a gladiatorial combat game. And it, uh, it has different levels of it, just playing your own gladiator, quick, you know, one-on-one -on -one combat game or whatever type of scenario you can come up with. It has rules for uh, animals, all sorts of different stuff in it. Or it has rules for uh, owning your own gladiator training school and training those gladiators and putting them into combat and trying to get them famous and moving them up to Rome, etc. So it's uh, I've played it several times. It kind of, I don't know, it, it, they got to a point where it was getting smooth to play and easy, but the thing is, is you need these character sheets. It's 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 like a DD and d of gladiatorial combat almost. It's not that, you know, intensive with uh, character creation and stuff like that, but in terms of damage, it's like, well, did I damage your left forearm or your left leg, or did I stab you in the torso, or did I, it's very detailed 
uh, when it comes to combat resolution and the wounds that are taking place and what happens with those. So it does take some time to resolve those issues to find out what actually happened. So it's not just, oh, I rolled, I hit, you know, do your save. Nope. Oh, I caused three damage. Nope. It's roll to hit, roll to defend. You know, where did I hit you? Uh, what did it do? Did you hold on to your weapon? You know, stuff like that. So uh, it gets very in depth in the, in the one on one combat. So it's definitely not a uh, roll to hit type of game. There's a lot more into that. It's not so subtle. And so that's it. But it does cover pretty much all the different types of gladiators in there. And this isn't, I haven't punched this. So it's not in the rings there. So I'm not going to flip through it. But there are, you know, there there covers pretty much. There's a whole bunch of charts and intervention tables. I mean, it's it's a it's a war game all in itself. Don't let it fuel you just because it's one on one or five on five or two on three combat, whatever the scenario may be. There's a lot of charts in here. It's very detail oriented, stuff like that. So uh, it's not a simple type of game but it is enjoyable and if you have the time and effort to put into it and learn it and remember it i think it could be very rewarding especially if you take your time to uh, uh build up scenery and, and all sorts of stuff so yeah that pretty much covers all of my miniature war game rules i have others um downloaded online that are on my phone or on my tablet like the Space Marine 40K, uh, the Epic 40K, which I still do play. I recently started buying formware for it in 6mm, and uh, uh, I will be doing battle reports of that because I'm a huge Space Marine, Epic Space Marine fan. I've always been intrigued by that. Played it, had a couple of the original box sets back in the early 90s, and unfortunately, most of them got trashed, but I did find some of my Rhinos and Land Raiders, which is going to save me a ton of money in the long run. But I have a couple of armies painted up already, uh, I just haven't gotten them to the table yet because, number one, i got to paint up all the scenery that I 3D printed for a whole bunch of buildings, a whole bunch of terrain, stuff like that. So once that's done, I'll do that. So that's one game that I have on there. Another game that I can't show you, like I said, is DBMM, which I'm extremely hyped about at this point in my life. And uh, I'm trying to think. I think that pretty much covers them all. Guys, what I would like to see from you, I would like to see, uh, I know Dash of Villan did one on ESR uh, at Sans Resultat, but um, I would like to see more on that game. Uh, possibly a battle report if one of you guys could do one of those because I'm highly thinking about uh, getting that set of rules for my 6mm naps and um, what other game... Um, I would like to, I'm looking into General Day Army, and I know many of you have done that, but I can't decide, um, I don't know, I can't decide if it's a must get right now, or if it's a hold off and wait, I don't know. Um, what other game am I thinking about getting? Uh, I would like to see, if anybody has the DBN rule book, I would like to see that, uh, and kind of an open book review just to show what's in it, talk about the rules, stuff like that. Um, but those are pretty much the rules that I want to see right now. Like I said, ESR, um, I've seen a lot on General Day RMA. There's not a lot on General Day Brigade, and I know GDA is kind of the upgraded version, so I'd probably go that route if I did. But um, uh, also, there's been some comparisons, there's been some fighting on what rules is better. What I've heard of these Napoleon's battles, which I haven't seen yet. So, uh, anybody want to talk about those and show the rule book, that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, ESR, uh, Napoleon's battles, and uh, what was the other one that I. Oh, yeah, DBN. So, if anybody has some reviews they want to do on those games, I'd be more than happy to see them. I, like I said, Dash of Law did a great one on ESR, but I want to see a battle report of, e of ESR, a thorough, in-depth battle report, uh, because I don't think there is any out there. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on now, going on 34, almost 40 minutes now, so thanks for taking the time to listen to my rant. I hope you enjoyed all these rules. Hope you see a couple in here that you never knew existed or you know hopefully i motivated you guys to take a, a look at some of them closer so guys take it easy i'll see you later